willing to sit down and have conversations about how we can move out of this age of stupidity. Some of those answers will come from Republicans, it's not, not the extremists that we're dealing with every single day. We've got to kill and confront that movement. Will somebody explain to me how he accepts losing? Yeah, uh, that's that's a, you know the answer big, to that question. That's a big conundrum. The only that answer is there, there is how the many only, times did you the get only that? plan we have? This is another Republican congressman, a former Republican congressman. I said, look, we have no plan for this except sitting around hoping he dies. Today's America is on the verge of collapse. Everything we cherish as the land of the free could be gone tomorrow if this type of rhetoric so carelessly and so frequently used by the leftist ruling class does not stop. A sleeping bear can only be poked so many times before it attacks, and it seems as though that's exactly what the Democrats want. This is a um, literally call to arms in our country. This decision and this policy will kill people. There is a war out there, and we need to recognize that we've got to armor up. The hell with the Supreme Court. We will defy them. Any reasonable person would say we shouldn't be destroying other people's property, but these are not reasonable times. Please, show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. We take an oath to protect and defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic, and sadly, the domestic enemies to our voting system and wow. our honoring our Constitution uh, are right at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they, they know that we mean business. The left has completed their first task for total control, establish a clear us versus them. But they won't succeed at their next task, which is deeming us the dangerous side as justification for them holding power indefinitely. Why? Because as Abraham Lincoln also famously said, the ballot is stronger than the bullet. And we have midterms coming up. Here to discuss with us, Republican Congressman from Florida, Matt Gates. Congressman, welcome. Great to have you here tonight. Well, it's good to be on, but when they're wishing for our death, when they are calling to kill MAGA, it makes me a little uncomfortable because I think when Joe Biden's talking about the MAGA Republicans in Congress, I'm the one he's talking about in a lot of these cases. And when you think about the language they're using, it's a heck of a lot more explicit in the calls for violence than anything we ever saw out of the pillow salesman who was rounded up at a Minnesota Hardee's by the FBI. You know, you have people trying to use constitutional process to make arguments about election integrity somehow conflated with violence. Meanwhile, those on the left calling for violence are actually being gaslit by Joe Biden. It was that very dark red Brandon speech that you clipped earlier where Joe Biden essentially allowed any harm that came to people on the political right to be directly linked back to a sense of virtue or patriotism, which is totally wrong. I mean, think about what MAGA stands for. Make America great again for everyone. That means even people on the left were doing better, were having better jobs, were more optimistic about our economy and our country when Donald Trump was president of the United States. You, know, you quoted Tim Ryan, who's in this tough Senate race, and it's bizarre to see him sort of revert back to his mean of supporting Joe Biden's gaslighting rhetoric. And you know, Tim Ryan, Ryan sometimes brags about being a master at yoga here in the Congress. Nothing wrong with yoga, right. but he's going to have to contort himself like some sort of weird twister game if he wants the people of Ohio to vote for him. That's Trump country up there. Yeah. And, you know, Congressman, we, we saw how they came after uh, President Trump uh, again and again and again, and they keep going after him. Um, and I think a lot of the American people right now feel like they have a target on their backs. Uh, it's not just elected officials, but it's everyday, hardworking, taxpaying Americans. Uh, they're now having to be concerned, like you mentioned, Mike Lindell uh, going after him as well at a Hardee's. Uh, people like that that have to be concerned about the government coming after them. And so, you know, I'm curious, how do you think this divisive rhetoric that we're seeing coming from the top down that's being repeated by everybody uh, from people under the president, other elected officials to uh, celebrities in the mainstream media. How do you think this is going to fare once the midterms come along? Because there's a new poll out and it shows that almost 60 percent of voters think that Joe Biden has divided the country even further since he became president. And there's another one, interestingly, that shows that significantly more Democrats than Republicans believe that Biden's anti-MAGA rhetoric is adding uh, to division in America. So do you think this feeling uh, is going to make it to the polls. 
Well, it's pretty simple. Americans were united around the idea that inflation was too high and it was Joe Biden's fault because they saw the policy choices that resulted in all of us having to live diminished lives. So we, the Republicans, don't need to divide the country because on the principal pocketbook issues, the country is with us. And so Democrats are using issues like abortion and race and any other thing they can use to try to divide the American people to get everybody to revert back to their you know, political, uh, most vicious state. And they hope that they can claw their way to some sort of a, uh, of a majority in the Senate as a consequence, probably the House being lost as a result of just the pain the American people have gone through. So yes, I do think the rhetoric from the left is on purpose to divide people for the sake of their politics. The good news is we actually have four years of the Trump presidency to point to, to say, you know what? If our economy's doing better, if you have a better job, if you're making more money, we can all be happier left and right together. Right. Let me ask you, Congressman, talking about diminished lives, uh, we want to get your take on Fauci's testimony in front of the Senate today. Uh, Fauci and, and Senator Rand Paul, they sparred, as usual, over Fauci's uh, dishonesty under oath. Let's take a listen. We've been asking you, and you refuse to answer, whether anybody on the vaccine committees gets royalties from the pharmaceutical companies. I asked you last time, and what was your response? We don't have to tell you. Right. We've demanded them through Freedom of Information Act, and what have you said? We're not going to tell you. But I tell you this, when we get in charge, we're going to change the rules, and you will have to divulge where you get your royalties from, from what companies, and if anybody on the committee has a conflict of interest, we're going to learn about it. I promise you that. After all these hearings with Fauci, he refuses to answer any real questions from the Republicans on the committee. I mean, you signed the Fire Fauci Act. What are your plans for Fauci in the House if and when Republicans regain power? So Fauci is the front end of the wave. I expect that Mayorkas, uh, maybe people at the FBI and DOJ will be leaving when they learn that they have to spend all of their time answering questions from House Republicans. I think that Dr. Fauci is probably going to get a very lucrative job offer at a pharmaceutical company or a university. But here's my message to anyone who would hire Dr. Fauci. He won't be around to do the job very much because we will have him sitting for deposition after deposition to learn about the gain of function research, the royalty and conflict of interest issues that Senator Rand Paul was discussing, Peter Daschek, and all of the things that led to this terrible calamity, including Fauci being all over the place on this pious advice he kept giving the country. I mean, Dr. Fauci should actually retire to go be like a bad weatherman, because much like a bad <laughs> weatherman, he's frequently wrong and yet never in doubt. <laughs> Such a great point. Congressman Matt Gates. well, we thank you for all the work that you do uh, and for holding people like Fauci accountable. And thanks for joining us tonight. Hope you'll come back more often. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Hey, guys, it's Rob Carson. September is historically the worst performing month for the stock market, so you better be ready for it. The Fed continues to aggressively raise rates, and J.P. Morgan is forecasting another mega rate hike September the 21st. Is that why Jamie Dimon said an economic hurricane is coming our way? Well, gold and silver have remained remarkably stable despite the Fed aggressively raising rates today. The Patriot Gold Group has a special incentive for Newsmax viewers. Huge! Now precious metals investors can enjoy the No Fee for Life Gold and Silver IRA on qualifying rollovers or enjoy free, discreet, insured shipping on all direct gold and silver purchases. Here's the number, 800-356-4470. Call 800-356-4470 today. <laughs>